Hello, Michelle. It's such an honor to have you as a guest on the Paleo Gardening Expert Interview. Thank you for calling in. I really appreciate it. No problem. Michelle Norris is the executive chef, owner, and founder of Instinct Catering and Events. She is also known as the co-founder and CEO of Paleo FX alongside her husband, Keith Norris. Michelle, how would you explain all that you do to anyone that is unfamiliar with your work? I think my passion is to educate people that they they not only have the right, but the responsibility to take their health into their own hands and become their own health advocate. I mean, no one else is going to be able to do it better than they are because nobody else is as interested in their health as they are. So that's probably the primary thing that I do. Um, all of my businesses all are interconnected and have something to do with health, wellness, and fitness. Um, we are obviously... Um, Keith and I are also partners in Efficient Exercise um, and ArcSpit, um, which is our, the proprietary equipment of Efficient Exercise. And then, of course, we're also involved in another company, um, ID Life Wellness, um, and that is customized um, supplementation, which has never been done. And then, <clears throat> obviously, Paleo FX, because that's the big one, and, um, and the primary role that we have in Paleo FX is educating people um, in numerous different ways about health, fitness, wellness, um, you know, just the overall um, optimization of health and wellness and, and happiness. So um, that's probably everything I do in a nutshell. So what does the FX in Paleo FX stand for? It is F of X which is the math function, and it stands for function. So it means functional paleo, basically. So basically, we're, we're educating people on how to put all of the science to work for you in a daily basis. And um, so our, that's the other reason why we're called theory to practice as well. So we put everything from theory to practice, and we teach people how to put paleo functionally in their life every day and make it work. That's good because sometimes it's hard to get the theory and then you're like, well, how do I implement this? When I saw the Paleo FX, when I first saw the FX, I'm like, oh, food prescription. Because, you know, like <laughs> RX is prescription. And so when you said that, I thought, oh, that's what she's going to say. But, but that's that funny. Great. Um, That's actually really funny. I like that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a food prescription. <laughs> Well, we might have to just adopt that now. <laughs> we might have to yes, do There both. you go. <laughs> okay. Could you describe the term ancestral wellness? Ancestral wellness would be um, encompassing our, you know, ancestry and going back and looking at things that worked for our ancestors um, and putting it into play now. And so that's, to me, that's what ancestral health is, is is um, just taking those cues and leveraging modern technology to make what um, works for them work for us now. And clearly, we became sick and um, obese and heart disease and diabetes all started spiking and elevating across the board in this country, particularly um, when we introduced um, agriculture. And so if you go, you know, um, pre-agriculture instead of post-agriculture and really take cues on what you need to eat, we didn't have processed foods and we didn't have refined sugar in our diet and we were much healthier people. Now, granted, um, a lot of people will argue that Paleolithic man did not live that long, but there was also, you know, there are things to be said about, you know, the modern health, even though our health health care system is kind of in a mess. But, you know, medicine and that type of thing um, have come a long way and helped us to be able to live longer. But also, um, you know, they also had elements to have to deal with and they had, you know, predators to deal with. And so um, that was the reason why they didn't live quite so long. And so um, that that would to me is the encomp encompassing of ancestral health. That's something that we do here on the farm is I raise sheep, and I would never feed my sheep, you know, pastries. It just it it doesn't make sense to the genetics of that sheep. No. And I think as humans, we need to look at our animal side and say, 
well, do pastries make sense for us either? Mm -hmm. And I think as we go back and look at, you know, our ancient history, like we can with the sheep, well, what what are sheep supposed to eat? Grass, you know? Like, well, what are humans supposed to eat? And you, you can't, to me, you can't replace what you're supposed to eat with a pill. No. No, it's, it's not going to work. No, a pill that's oh. going to mask whatever's wrong with you instead of fixing whatever's wrong with you. I completely agree with you there. Yeah. Um, I mean, we definitely it, need to eat uh, biologically appropriate. Yes, yes. And I, I love the idea of I'm in charge of my health. I'm responsible for selecting what I need to do. Exactly. I think that's, a lot of people don't do that. They're like, oh, well, I'm just going to grab this today because I'm in a hurry. And, well, that's not being responsible. No. no. So can you tell me more about the Paleo FX event? It's basically an informative and fun three-day paleo party with the who's who of the paleo sphere. But basically it features three days jam-packed, and we've had a lot of um, complaints about how much we have going on. <laughs> but uh, it's jam-packed uh, with presentations, mastermind panel discussions, think tanks, cooking demonstrations, um, hands-on fitness workshops, fitness scoring, competitive fitness challenges, and they're all led by um, dozens of leading physicians, scientists, New York Times bestselling authors, celebrity athletes, fitness professionals, activists, much, much more. Um, we have, like I said, the who's who of the paleosphere and the strength and conditioning world um, that come and uh, educate people on what they need to do in their daily life. Sounds like a great event. Where do you, where does it take place? Austin, Texas, um, <clears throat> takes place usually in the spring. This this next coming year, we're going to be Memorial Day weekend, um, and we're going to have some add-on events um, this coming year uh, as well, since it's a holiday weekend. So um, it will be um, the 27th through the 29th. It will be the actual Paleo FX event. And it's at Palmer Event Center again this next year. How has your journey to health affected the way that you help others? Once I realized that I was actually healthy, it was a new normal for me. So when I realized what that new normal was and that it could be applicable to other people, I knew that I had to share what I knew with everyone that I possibly could. And so it's... um, you know, obviously um, erupted into, we've got websites, we have, you know, Paleo FX now, we have other businesses that um, in, are in, you know, inclusive of this journey to health. And so um, I think it just launched all of that. Uh, my husband says that once the day that I realized that, that I had information that could help other people that uh, an, a paleo evangelist was born. So... <laughs> Uh, I'm just one of those people that wants, you know, to share the information that I have with as many people as I can. That's the same journey that my life went on. My sister introduced me to paleo about three years ago. I've been autoimmune struggling all my life and didn't know why or understand it. And I, you know, got all those grains and berries and everything on my diet. My energy just spiked and it's like, oh, my gosh, this is the best thing on the planet, and I just, like, want to tell everybody. And, and oh, yeah. It's like, you know, you've been gardening professionally for 28 years. You have methods that will speed up their gardening and help them. And she's like, share that. And I'm like, yes, yes, I'm going to teach them how to garden and grow all these wonderful foods and make this available. And so, yeah, I have that same vein running inside of me that you have inside mm-hmm. of you. And it's like, this is so cool because I just want to share, you know. Exactly. So, yeah, I know exactly how you're feeling. So on Paleo Gardening, our mission is to make the paleo lifestyle available to anyone by inspiring and teaching them practical skills. So how would you inspire someone who is just beginning their paleo journey? Well, I find that a lot of people who are looking at um, becoming paleo find it daunting or overwhelming um, because it's it's cutting a lot of stuff out of your diet immediately. And it's, for some people, it's great. They can do the whole cold turkey and do it all at one time. But for those that, that and, and it's a good majority, have, uh, like I said, that find it daunting or overwhelming, I just 
basically you tell them take little steps if if it's that if it's that overwhelming you know cut one thing at a time and enjoy the successes individually and know that a one step is better than none um get creative with the process and challenge um themselves along the way um by finding the better options menu choices and playing with their food and then uh, probably the last thing I would say is to be sure to make note of how you feel when you cut things from your diet so you truly understand and feel the win. Um, that's probably, you know, I coach a lot of people in their paleo journeys, and, um, you know, that's the big thing is really taking note and under, starting to really understand and get in tune with your body and knowing when your body is reacting and, you um, and that could be reacting bad or reacting good. And when you are, you know, you get out of the food coma and the food haze and you, the bloating goes away and the aches and the pains go away and you start having this, like I say, new normal, you know, you need to feel those wins and, and then it'll, it will inspire you and, and spur you on further to make further um, changes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, sugar was my demon. God, the first three you. days, coming off of sugar was hard. And and sugar, carbs, too. And then about three weeks in, the fat burning part of my body kicked in. And all of a sudden, my blood sugar was stable for like five, six hours at a time. And before, it was like two hours, you know. And mm-hmm. I felt that new norm. And I absolutely love that. And then something happened in about five months. Like, my energy went up, and my brain cleared, and but it took, like, those five months, and I took another step up. It exactly. It was fun just to watch this, but I, but I was careful with my food, very careful, and stayed on my path, and, and the changes did occur. So what is your vision for the future of your work? Um, just working on refining and restructuring our systems, particularly paleo effects, um, so that we can take our event not only to the next level, but around the world. And and we're in the process of working with other events, um, creating other health events, um, so that they will be successful as well. And um, I think we've gotten the event um, side. I, I've been an event planner for, um, oh, probably 25 years. And um, just really refining this process so that um, – Creating health events that will be successful is probably my my next big vision. Um, and, you know, because that's the thing, I'd like for other people to learn from our mistakes because the thing is, is that a lot of people don't really know this or understand this because all they saw was Paleo Effects was successful from the beginning is it was um, fundamentally successful, but it was not financially successful. And it made it very difficult to continue going forward because it put us in personal debt for a couple of years. But we kind of saw the light at the end of the tunnel and knew that we, you know, made changes and did some different things and that we would eventually be fine and not, I mean, because our big thing wasn't making money. It was making sure that this was available to as many people as possible. The only thing we really cared about was breaking even. And um, we realized that that was the wrong mentality to, to go about this, that we needed to make more money so that we could hire more people and that we could end up ultimately touching more people. And so mm-hmm. we've made those changes now. And so now we're looking to help other people that have, you know, really great health events, um, ideas, help them not make the same mistakes we made. Um, There's a common misconception that the paleo lifestyle is unaffordable. How do you combat the misconception and make it affordable? Uh, Basically, by trying to make people understand not to let the perfect get in the way of the good. I mean, there um, is good enough and there is, you know, optimal. And if you can only afford good enough, that's good. That's just letting them know that they can do something. Um, you know, by whatever means they have and realizing it's a matter of priorities. I mean, perfection does not exist, particularly in the paleo diet. There isn't a single paleo leader that eats the perfect paleo diet because it does not exist. So if they just will strive to do good 
and do you, you know, we talk about the 80, 20, if you're doing, if your diet is 80% good, most of the time, you're doing way better than the average American or, you know, average person that eats across the world. Um, so that right there is, is, um, that's really what to strive for. And, um, I think, like I said, it's a matter of making it a priority. Their health has to be important to them and become a priority um, and realize that there are things you can cut to make sure that you can afford to get the food that you need. And this is the thing. Personally, our bills, our food bills went down when we went into paleo because we stopped having to have all the snack foods and all the stuff um, in between meals because we were always hungry. And so ours actually went, our food bill went down when we um, came off all the junk and we didn't eat a lot. And I shouldn't say a whole, we didn't have a whole lot of junk, but, you know, chips occasionally, um, you know, some cookies occasionally, things like that. If when we started really eating meats and vegetables and fruits and um, really stuck to the good stuff, our bill actually went down because we didn't have all the other extra crap that we needed to have in the pantry to, you know, make it from lunch to dinner. So, um, and not having to eat all that constantly. So personally, I think that it is a misconception and the simple fact of the matter is it's, I'm going to throw out Rob's thing, try it for 30 days and see how you look, feel and perform and how much it really costs you and really do the estimates. And I think you're going to find that it's not that it's not unaffordable at all. In fact, it's going to cost you less in the long run because, you know, you either pay now or you pay later. That's kind of my theory is you're either going to take care of your health now and pay for the things that make your, make yourself healthy, or you're going to pay later and you're going to be paying astronomical bills to hospitals, not to mention your quality of life will be completely diminished. So yeah, that's kind of where that's kind of where I go with it is there's a way of making it affordable. Everybody can buy it. the good food and pay the doctor bills. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, when you decide that you want a new car and you need to save for it, <laughs> you know, you make up your mind about things that you want. This is no different. Do you want your health or not? It's that's just kind of how in my opinion how it, how it really is. And it's and you don't have to it doesn't have to be perfect um you know the optimum is obviously grass-fed meats pastured meats um or all organic whatever but i don't do that i can't i can't necessarily do that all the time and i don't and i don't worry about it i just do the best that i possibly can do and that's all that anybody really should do and you're still getting good results even though you can't hit optimum Absolutely. I mean, you're going to, you're definitely going to get good results if you cut out the Fritos and the Cheetos and the Doritos and the pizza and, you know, all the, you know, Cokes and you name it, you're going to get great health results just getting rid of that stuff and going to real food. Real whole foods are not expensive. If you, if you do this um, and make this a priority in your life, they're not expensive. Farmers markets. I, that's the, the. I mean, getting your food from farmers markets is a, probably one of the best ways to get affordable food. Or grow it yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Or grow it yourself. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's our expertise. Grow it yourself. So, your work has helped so many people, and there are many of us who would like to see you continue. How can anyone listening stay involved with your work? You can follow Paleo FX on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, then sign up for our newsletter on our website, paleofx.com. And then they can personally follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Michelle Curtis Norris. Or on Twitter, I'm um, Eclectic Kitchen. And on Instagram, I'm Eclectic Kitchen Evolved. So um, those are probably the best ways to stay in touch with us and, and understand what we've got going on and be involved. Um, because mm-hmm. if we ask for any involvement from, you know, the greater public, it's going to come through those um, venues. Do you have anything else you would like to tell our audience before I close this off? Our tickets for Paleo Effects will go on sale within the next week or so. 
before. I think it should be by September 1st, if not on September 1st. Um, okay. And um, they can get tickets at Payless FX. And I would definitely recommend they do it quickly, uh, as quick as they can, because we have sold out for the last three years. Excellent. I'm so happy to hear that people are coming and participating. For those of you listening, to learn more about Michelle Norris and Paleo FX, click the link in the description below or visit paleofx.com. It was a pleasure to have you as a guest on the Paleo Gardening Expert Interview, and I want you to have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.